Let's take a look at how the Hornet became the Super Hornet. Just like the F-18 Hornet, the Super Hornet is a multi-role, twin-engine, supersonic carrier-capable fighter and attack aircraft. The Super Hornet's notable features include twin tails, folding wings, a tail section that has vertical stabilizers forward of the elevators, a unique extended wing design with leading edge extensions or LEX, reinforced landing gear for carrier operations, and wingtip missile racks. However, unlike the Hornet, the Super Hornet has rectangular intake ramps, a larger sawtooth wing, and is about 20% larger than the original Hornet. With its larger wing, more powerful engines, and extended combat radius, Super Hornets are used as fleet defenders, air superiority fighters, long-range strike aircraft with precision-guided weapons, fighter escort, suppression of enemy air defenses, close air support, maritime strike, reconnaissance, forward air control, and even tankers. Essentially, the Super Hornet is capable of performing every mission type in the tactical spectrum, making it the embodiment of a multi-role fighter and attack aircraft. Before we dive deeper into the Super Hornet, make sure you check out part one of this series, which covers the origins of the Hornet. And as always, please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. One more thing, the official designation of the Super Hornet is the F-A-18E or F. So for purposes of brevity, I'll just say F-18 or Super Hornet most of the time. All right, let's start by taking a look at the specifications of the Super Hornet. Just like the Hornet, the Super Hornet has an incredible array of weapons it can carry. While the Super Hornet retains the internal 20mm M61 Vulcan cannon, it also adds two additional hardpoints under the wings, bringing the total to 11. Some of the weapons options for these hardpoints are as follows. For air-to-air -air missions, the AIM-9 Sidewinder, AIM-9X, AIM-7 Sparrow, and AIM-120 AMRAAM. For anti-ship operations, the Harpoon and SLAM ER. For air-to-ground missions, the Maverick, Joint Standoff Weapon, Paveway Laser Guided Bombs, and Traditional Bombs. For suppression of enemy air defenses or SEED, the Harm Missile. And, in the case of the Growler, external jamming pods. This list is by no means exclusive, and should serve to demonstrate that if there is an airborne munition in the inventory, the Super Hornet can probably carry it. Just like the latest version of the F-16, the Super Hornet carries the AN-APG-79 radar system, which is smaller and lighter than previous radars. Moreover, this system provides an enhanced view of the battlefield and allows for the detection, identification, and tracking of multiple targets at range. Additionally, the Super Hornet can carry data link pods, which allow for one aircraft to lock onto a target and another to fire on it. A variant of the Super Hornet, the Growler, specializes in electronic warfare and contains even more sensors and sensor pods. In fact, the internal 20mm cannon is removed to make room for advanced jamming equipment and sensors. Growlers provide escort jamming to confuse enemy defenses as well as standoff jamming and deception rolls. Since the Growler has 90% commonality with the Super Hornet, it can accompany other F-18s in all phases of the attack mission. Defensively, Super Hornets and Growlers also carry flare and chaff dispensers to help foil enemy missile locks. When the Navy ordered the original Hornet, it was intended to replace older strike aircraft and serve as a complement to the larger and longer ranged F-14 Tomcat. And while the Hornet was good at performing many roles and much easier to maintain, its smaller size limited the Hornet's combat radius. Following the end of the Cold War, the Navy began plans to modernize or replace the F-14, which by then was starting to show its age. When the cost of upgrading the F-14 proved to be too expensive, 
the Navy began seeking a replacement. Initially, as part of the Naval Advanced Tactical Fighter, or NATF, program, a navalized F-22 was considered. And while the F-22 is an incredible aircraft, adapting it for carrier operations would have increased its weight by about 30%. Additionally, in order to adjust to demanding carrier operations, variable wings would have been needed to modify the F-22's flight profile. This doesn't even get into the potential loss of stealth characteristics or huge costs that would have been involved. For these reasons, the navalized F-22 concept was soon scrapped. At the same time the Navy was looking to replace the F-14, it was also looking to replace the A-6 Intruder, which was an old airframe by the 1990s. McDonnell Douglas had proposed the A-12 Avenger II, but the program was canceled after cost overruns, delays, and doubt whether the program could even meet its stated objectives. This left the Navy searching for both a long-range fighter and attack platform. Enter McDonnell Douglas. As far back as the 1980s, an enlarged Hornet concept was being proposed which was known then as Hornet 2000. Deciding it was safer to upgrade a relatively new design instead of creating something from scratch, the Navy proceeded to move forward. And while an enlargement of an existing airframe may seem like a minor modification, the upgraded Hornet essentially became a new aircraft. However, in order to gain budget approval, the Navy kept the FA-18 designation to convince Congress that this program was a low-risk derivative of the Hornet. After much testing and trials, the Super Hornet was approved as a replacement for both the F-14 and A-6 in February of 2000, replacing two legendary aircraft and essentially condensing the fleet to an all-Hornet composition left the Super Hornet with very big shoes to fill. More on that later. When it was all said and done, the Navy considered the Super Hornet's acquisition a success, having met schedule and cost requirements. Today, the Super Hornet is produced by Boeing, with Northrop Grumman being the main subcontractor. Northrop Grumman produces the fuselage and vertical tail sections and assembles all associated subsystems at its facility in El Segundo, California. We've mentioned some similarities between the Hornet and Super Hornet, but how are they different? Here are a few. The most obvious feature are the rectangular air ramps of the Super Hornet versus the round ones found on the Hornet. Due to its larger sawtooth wings, the Super Hornet also has two extra hard points, raising the total to 11 from the Hornet's 9. And even though it is a larger aircraft, the Super Hornet has more than 40% fewer structural parts than the Hornet. The GE F414 engines have 35% more thrust than the original Hornet's F404 engines. The Super Hornet also has an enlarged leading edge extension, or LEX, which allowed to perform well at high angles of attack. The larger Super Hornet is also about 7,000 pounds heavier in the empty weight configuration and carries over 30% more internal fuel, which as a result increases its range by over 50% as compared to the original Hornet. Additionally, the Super Hornet can return to a carrier with more fuel and munitions still on board, an ability known as Bring Back. The Super Hornet's Bring Back capacity is over 9,000 pounds. Additionally, the Super Hornet was designed to be equipped with the Buddy Store or Area Refueling System to refuel other aircraft. Aside from the US Navy, Australia has ordered 24 Super Hornets and Kuwait has ordered 28. Canada, Switzerland, Malaysia, and Finland, all current operators of F-18 Hornets, have also expressed interest in purchasing Super Hornets to upgrade their air forces. And finally, as of the recording of this video, Germany is considering purchasing Super Hornets after having withdrawn from the F-35 program in January of 2019. These operators and potential operators make the Super Hornet a truly international platform. While the Super Hornet is a capable and advanced aircraft, the introduction of fifth generation aircraft and technologies have shown the need for upgrades. The latest version of the Super Hornet, the Block 3 or Advanced Super Hornet, addresses these concerns. Upgrades include General Electric's Enhanced Performance or EPE engine, which increases thrust output from 22,000 pounds to 26,400 pounds per engine while reducing the overall fuel burn rate. A 50% reduction in frontal radar cross-section or RCS, as well as the ability to equip and enclose weapons pods to further reduce detection. This helps complement the stealthy F-35s on their missions. Conformal fuel tanks or CFTs are integrated into the fuselage 
allowing an additional 3,500 pounds of fuel without significantly affecting drag, allowing the Super Hornet to fly farther and faster. An increased operational lifespan of at least 9,000 hours, up from 6,000 hours. This will extend the Super Hornet's life by years and possibly even decades. Improved sensor upgrades such as a 17 times more powerful upgraded computer system, improved data link sharing, and the addition of an enlarged touchscreen in the cockpit, which gives a pilot the ability to target and track multiple long-range targets. These sensor upgrades also allow the backseater in the F model Super Hornet to control up to four to six Loyal Wingman drones, which are Boeing's latest UAV. And while specs are still classified on the Loyal Wingman, in theory, a Super Hornet could sit back and send in UAVs to conduct strike or reconnaissance missions without endangering the human crew. The Super Hornet has been defending the Navy fleet and projecting power since its introduction into service in 2000, and with planned upgrades will continue to serve for decades to come. Having evolved from the Hornet, which itself evolved from the Cobra, the Super Hornet has earned a deserved reputation as one of the most storied and versatile aircraft. Over 50 years ago in 1965, the Northrop designers who began working on Project P530 as a rework of the F5E could not have known the long trail the design would blaze in the skies. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and like to see more, please subscribe. See you next time.